What's going on YouTube? Rios here and today we're back with another challenge. We're going to attempt to do the trying to make a song without any sound challenge. Now this challenge was actually recommended to me by Avocado and Pineapple. Shout out to Avocado and Pineapple. But if you guys have any challenge recommendations, uh, you can leave them down below. I always take a look at them and I'll pick the ones that I think are uh, pretty interesting. I think this one will be hilarious. If you guys know me, if you watch any of my other videos, you know that when I produce, I listen to a sound. 500 to a thousand times while I'm producing so making a song without any sound is going to be tough and let me take a video to show you guys on my phone you'll see that my speakers are completely off right now so I don't have I can't hear shit <laughs> I can't hear anything so this is gonna be pretty funny I have no idea what I'm even gonna make and I think that's another part of why it sounds so important for me because I get inspired by the sounds that I'm hearing so hearing nothing this is gonna be interesting. Also quickly, in case you guys missed it, I just released a new song called Alone that just came out on Revealed featuring my boy Blaine. If you guys haven't checked it out already, there'll be a link in the description. I really appreciate if you go check it out. It's a song that means a lot to me, but with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so as you guys see here, I'm starting with a completely empty FL Studio template. <sighs> All right, I don't know, what do we wanna make? So obviously I'm thinking that we should probably make something along my typical sound. I kind of wanted to do something like future bass or like a hard drop, but I think we'll go with some, you know, classic progressive house just cause. So also quick note, you guys, I'm actually gonna leave the sound on inside my computer so that you guys can hear everything I'm doing. But again, my speakers are off like you saw. So I can't hear anything and I'll turn them off at the end and we'll uh, we'll review what I did together. Let's, I wanna make a chord progression in the piano. We'll start in G sharp minor cause that's the key I like to work in the most. All right, so we'll go like that. And then for the chords, we'll make triads, one, two, three, six, seven. Uh, put these, make sure they're all aligned. Put this up. Okay, and then maybe we can you know, bring these down for some variation. That, lo that looks about right. We'll try that. I can't hear anything, <laughs> but you guys can. So hopefully that sounds decent. Let's maybe I'll make like those like old school, not old school, but like that 2013 progressive sound where I start off with like a pluck and then it builds up into a drop, kind of like reload. I actually have some presets that I found over time and I haven't even fully used them yet, but I know they sound good. Uh, it's like if I'm scrolling through a pack and I think this sound sounds good for later use, I save it in a whole separate folder. So I'm going to go to that folder and I'll look for a pluck sound. This one's actually called Reload. <laughs> All right, so we'll try this one. I'm assuming that it has that like typical uh, progressive -y pluck sound, I guess. So, all right, let's try to make a melody. See, without any sound, it's so hard to get inspired. Like I don't, I don't have any melody ideas. Melody ideas, melody ideas. Okay, um, I think if we make the pluck melody kind of similar to like the same notes as what's in the chords, I think it has to sound decent. Like it won't be anything crazy, but like, Okay, so in my head, this sounds like dun, 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 dun. Okay, so it'd be like dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we'll go like down, <laughs> like a tape stop, pitch bend. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. Man, this is hard. <laughs> um, Actually, you know what? Scratch that. We'll go a little more simple. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> Wait, dun, 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 dun. it's like that Tokyo song. The, uh, what is that? Tokyo. I don't know. It's from Tokyo Drift, that theme song. Dude, it's so hard to get inspired when you don't hear anything. Like, I have no inspiration right now. I'll probably just copy this over. Move this up maybe, go down. I can tell just by the looks of it, it's such a basic melody, but um, we'll have to rock with it for now. Cause I'm not inspired, I can't come up with anything else. And I wanna have some like vocal atmosphere ambient sounds where the piano is. Long atmosphere. So we're in G sharp minor. I have no idea what these sound like. So let's go, actually, you know what? Let's be risky. Let's take three. That looks cool. And then we'll pitch it up one instead of using the actual G-sharp, but maybe we'll get a cooler result. Let's try to do a little mixing. Piano's here. I could tell that this piano 
is muddy. For sure. Is it? So I can guess it myself. I don't know. Okay, the atmosphere seems a little loud, so let me mix that a little bit lower. Hopefully that sounds good. I don't even know what that sounds like, to be honest. If I'm thinking, piano open up. We should have some sort of should we? Some sort of impact? I don't know. Like, let's skip on the impact for now. Let's add the impact though when the plug comes in. Boundary the main impact. This plug is stale as hell. I could tell that. So um let's sweeten it up a little bit, throw a little bit of focus on it, and we'll drive it a bit and we'll widen it. I actually have no idea if it has reverb on it. Does it? Or do we need reverb? It does. It seems like it's pretty wet. Now, what I would normally do is if I had that plug come in, I'd wanna add some sort of bass line. So we'll open up Spire for that. I know for sure, cause I used it in the past, but I know this bass from the factory bank called Kung Fu. I know this sounds cool. I know it's that like vibe I'm going for. So we'll just go like this and Oh, you know what though? I don't know what sounds too low or too high. Okay, that's definitely too low. I could tell by looking up here. Is that right or? Okay, that's too high. I could tell that. Hmm. All right, we'll play it safe. We'll, we'll go up here. Yeah, I don't know. I know, maybe we'll go like this. Compromise, we'll meet in the middle. I also like when these bases are a bit stereo. So we'll use a wider plugin on it and make it wider. I don't know how wide is too wide, but loose us up to 69. And let's see. I was gonna say, let's see how that sounds, but my speakers aren't on. Okay. I know I wanna add a sort of sweep right here. That's 100% too loud. Okay. And maybe we'll add some claps. We'll go with the festival clap just because I use it often. I think it'll sound decent, hopefully. Maybe we should add like a reverse going into this. So we'll go to sweeps and let's do identity simple one bar. Okay. That looks to be about right. Okay, maybe what I could do so that it's not super short is I'll keep these claps going and then I'll introduce some more chords. I could introduce like strings. I think that might sound cool. And then I could also introduce an arpeggiator, which could be cool also. All right, so I have these strings. Is this too high or do I want it to be, or sorry, is that too low? I mean, is this higher? Usually strings, I want them to be higher. Hopefully that's not too high. I don't wanna cut the lows a bit. And then maybe cut out some of that mud. And then a little OTT for the for the fans, a little OTT. <laughs> Again, this is so weird that I can't hear anything. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. And then I wanted to do an ARP. Let's use this ARP uh, for my identity VIP mix. And I'll use the same processing I did, which is, I'll show you guys in a second, but I'm gonna actually open up that chain. Literally, it's just an EQ that filters out the highs and the lows and a reverb. That's just start. I think this is the default preset for vintage verb. It's my one of my favorites, probably my favorite. Um, okay, so we can use that tip from my FL Studio tips and tricks video. If you guys didn't watch that already, go ahead and do so. Actually, you know what? There's too many notes here. So let's go let's take out all of these and then we'll do Alt A. How fast do we want it? I think that's okay. I don't know, I hope that sounds good. Now, another thing that I like to do is add some sort of kick in the brakes so that there is a little bit of groove or movement. Um, so we'll just use the kick that I use in Only You for the break. All right, so I just finished adding that kick in there. And I think the only other thing I wanna do is maybe add a little bit more atmosphere. I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but I use this sound all the time in like most of my songs, somewhere in the song. It's like almost like a, like an Easter egg that I always use. Kind of know that it's a Ryo song, but um, it's this sound here. Um, so maybe right there could be cool. Is it loud? Is it too loud? 
Seems all right. Okay, so let's move into a buildup and then we can move into a drop. All right, so for the buildup now, I'm just gonna copy those sounds over and then let's introduce a little bit more effects. So maybe we can do some crowd noise in the build. We have that white noise. Maybe we can have another one. I like, I know this one I like a lot. All right, so next I think we need to add a snare buildup, very typical in EDM to do. Um, so let's add a snare. I know this is a pretty fat sounding snare and then we'll kind of draw on a fairly basic pattern. And then twice here, I'll copy that over. And then we'll have it just kind of progressively get faster and faster. Just super simple. Especially if I can't hear anything, I kind of want to do what, what I know works so that it's decent. Okay, so pop that in here. Let's see what this sounds like. It's funny, I'm saying, let's see what it sounds like as if I can hear it, but I can't. Hopefully this doesn't sound too bad. Hopefully you guys aren't like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> okay, so what was I doing? I got distracted. Snare build. We'll go like this for the build up. We'll just copy this over. So next I wanna add a more rhythmic snare to play in the background. Something that's a little bit more uh, delicate and not so like in your face. So I typically like to probably make a pattern like this. Typically, probably. <laughs> I probably like to make a pattern like this. I think this will sound like what I'm going for, just straight through and we'll filter it down and have it go up. Use a simple one for that. My favorite filter. I will just have it open up. I use, like part of me wants to put reverb on this too. I feel like it needs a little bit of space. I think that's something I, I typically do or would do rather. Let's just go to ambience, snare ambience. And then I 100% want to pitch it up. Whoops. Okay. And okay, so that's a rhythmic snare. Now the snare build, do I even want to pitch this one up? Maybe I don't. Mm, but I usually do. So let's just do it. See if I could hear it, it'd be a different story, but I can't hear shit. So let's go with what we know works. Next, I think we should filter out all these synths. Actually, you know what? Let's add some risers first. Actually, wait, I made a quick discovery. I like adding rain in the background. I feel like that will add some texture. I think texture is very important in dance music tracks because I feel like it's really easy for things to sound stale and artificial. So adding a little bit of lively element just helps make it feel alive, so. Hopefully that's a good level. I don't want it to be too loud. It's, oh, that's what I was doing. I needed a riser. I got distracted again. Okay. I know this is like a, yeah, this is a huge sounding riser. So with my risers, what I typically like to do is I like to have one with movement. So I'm like, I could even see in this one, it's like boom, 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 boom. So I like adding one of those. I like adding a white noise one. And then I like adding like a, a noisy saw sort of one. So I know I have my sweeps folder. I know I have identity seven bars. Yeah, this looks like white noise. So we'll use this one. It's probably too loud, but we'll use that. And then I like adding like a noisy one. Yeah, I like this riser a lot. So let's see what it sounds like. Let's try to mix it. Halfway through the buildup, I like to add some sort of effect, whether it be an impact or a crash. I think it helps to keep things interesting. So let's add like a boomy impact. I think I saved the one that I use in identity. So we could just use that one. Yeah, identity halfway build. Lower it to a point where I think will sound decent. Maybe that'll be all right for the risers. Now let's work on these synths a bit. I think I'm just gonna simply filter them out. I think that'll work. Just created a high pass filter and then I'll filter these like so. So I'll copy that onto the strings and I'll link it to that same automation clip so I don't have to do it again. Which you know how to do if you watch my 20 FL Studio Tips videos, just saying. Okay, so I just did that. The bass, the bass I know I'm gonna wanna pitch up. I like doing that. So we'll go, this will pitch once we get to the halfway point of the buildup like so. Also, I'll throw some volume automation and an endless smile on the master channel so that everything gets automated at once. 
I like using the initial preset for Endless Smile. I think it's really good for giving that like washed effect. I'm gonna have to reduce some of that volume because especially when you start using Endless Smile, things get really loud. And also you kind of want to, if you guys don't know this already, you should try lowering the volume of the buildup as it gets closer to the drop because it makes the drop feel that much more impactful. So let's lower the volume. I like, usually I do around 70% or so. You don't want it to be too low but you also want it to make a difference. It's looking like a buildup. I think, what else would I want to add here? I think the claps need to get faster to match the rhythm of the snares. So we'll just copy that like this. I think that's okay for the buildup. I think just adding like a pre-drop impact. And then, oh, actually, you know what's a good idea? I just thought of this. I could probably open up the cutoff of the pluck. That's a good idea. Does it help? It looks like it helps. So we'll do that as it's building up and maybe we could even pitch it up if we're feeling cheeky. We could pitch it up. My instinct is to put Endless Smile on this as well and like really wash it out. All right, Endless Smile, washing that bitch out. <laughs> it's so funny. My instinct is to like, after I do something to like listen back and make sure I like it, but my speakers are off. I mentioned that like 45,000 times. Did you guys know my speakers are off? So what do I want to do for a pre-drop like fill or something? Because I mean, if we have a vocal on here, sometimes it's cool to just have the vocal kind of uh, just shine right before the drop and not have anything else playing. So we'll pretend like we're going to put a vocal there and we'll leave it relatively empty. And then let's start on a drop. So, so far we have like a break. We have a whole section really. Now we could just start on a drop. So for the drop, um, I know I'm going to want to use We'll use the boundaries kick. Let's do a simple four to the floor pattern. We'll do some on beat claps to match that. Let's add a white noise ride. Oh, not that one. This one. Listen, if you guys are producers, definitely work on making your own like personal sample packs because it helps your workflow so much. Like if I had, didn't have my own sample pack, I'd be, I'd be a lost cause right now, but at least I have some sounds that I know I like to use often and contribute to my like style. So it's good to have, especially for, you know, if you have to make music without sound. I don't wanna go too crazy with the drums if I want it to be like a old school sounding. I, I keep saying old school. I mean like a 2012, 13, excuse me, uh, progressive sounding drop. So let's focus on the leads now. Let's open up Nexus. Let's try Saw Excellence 3. I always like using three because three is my girlfriend's lucky number. So that means it's one of my lucky numbers now too. So we'll use three. So I need to find another lead now. Let's go to, let's go to Spire for that one. And I think I know what this one sounds like. It's very like cheesy sounding, I think. <laughs> so because I am going for that like 2013 classic progressive house or big room uh, sounding sound, I want to kind of double up on the saws. Usually I would just use one, but let's, let's add another one. Another one. So we'll go to the Swedish house because it's kind of like what I'm going for. I think I like Big Room too. I feel like I've used this one before. I feel like I like this. So let's go with this one. It sounds familiar, I like the name. So I know I want to do a pluck, of course. Dude, do we want to just, oh, you know what? Voice pluck. I feel like these could be cool. How's the transient on this though? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch. Tiger by its toe, I think. Is that the nursery rhyme? I don't know, but I picked four. So how is this? That seems low. That seems high. We'll go with low, cause I'd rather it be lower than it be higher. Um, I can't, how noisy are all these leads? Do I need white noise? It doesn't look like I need any more white noise. It looks, this doesn't look like it sounds good. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I could tell, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. So let's process these all together. I don't want to process them individually because I don't know what they sound like. So it'll just be a safer bet to kind of process them all together. So first off, we'll do an EQ. We'll do a little bit of treatment. We'll cut the lows around here. We'll cut a little bit of this area because especially when you start stacking synths, stacking synths, yeah. Um, this area gets a little bit harsh. So we'll cut around here. And what the? Siri, what the hell? All right, <laughs> anyway, um, let's do some Camel Crusher. 
use this preset and then we can even do a touch of OTT, just a little bit, like 9%. I wanna add, I'd never know how to say this. I'm not even gonna Puig Tech, Puig Tech. Some producers called the Pull Tech, but is that like a different plugin? Cause this clearly says Puig, it's not Pull. <laughs> but the P Tech, we'll call it the P Tech. So I wanna use the P Tech to boost the highs cause it does it so smoothly, so good. So I'm gonna add a reverb. I like Arts Acoustic for the edm -y, for the more edm -y sounds. And then I love H delay. I'm gonna throw on a, the simple ping pong thing here, the preset, turn off analog and make this only like 20%. Ah, it's probably too much. Let's do like 10, ah, 15, meet in the middle. <laughs> okay. Doesn't look right, it looks too squash. Why does that look so squash? Oh, the reverb's completely wet. Oh my God. Good catch, all right. And then let's throw a side chain on here. Let's work on adding some bass sounds. Actually, first, let me add some chords. So I'm gonna use a chord patch that I use in every single song. If you listen to any of my music, I use this patch in every freaking song. So I'm gonna open that up. All right, so I have that patch open now and I'm just gonna use the same chords from the break. I'll copy that into the patch. I wanna add some sort of like high chords. Yeah, maybe we'll just do like a super saw chord. Um, big room chord, big saw chords. Oh my God, there's so many options. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Give me the best chords, please. Okay, this one. All right, that's not what I'm looking for, I don't think, but we'll try it. Um, and then let's do the bass, so drop bass. So first, let's open up Serum. Serum. <laughs> um, Serum is a great, great plugin. Probably one of my favorites and it's amazing for bass sounds. Oh, actually, you know what? I think we should do a typical progressive like galloping bass. I don't know if I saved the boundaries bass, but if I did, then we're using it. Oh, gallop bass, I did. Okay, we're gonna use the gallop bass from boundaries. Oh wait, but is it? Oh yeah, I actually have to draw in the MIDI. Okay, so we can use that chop tool. Plug my FL Studio video yet again. If you watch it, I talk about these tricks. Um, okay, like that I think is fast enough. And you know what, also we should probably just cut these a little bit so that there's not overlap. All right, so yeah guys, because I did wind up saving that boundaries base that I used for my track boundaries, um, I'm using it. It's not cheating, it's not cheating, it's not cheating. <laughs> Let's mix this in. Now, I like my basses to be relatively loud and aggressive, loud and proud. So we'll put that loud. Let's use a sub bass. Um, open up Serum for that again. And let's adjust this. And then for the sub, I think we'll keep it really simple. I'll literally just put on an R bass. I can tell I need to move this down though. And we'll copy that same side chain setting from the Boundaries Gallop Bass. Wow, this is so strange. I have no idea what it sounds like. I was actually listening to my track Living Again the other day, and I remember that I did something really weird in that track that I've never done before, but I had this like really weird sound. Yeah, rhythm harmony. Yeah, this was like a really weird thing that I did with Living Again. It's just like another layer um, that just, first of all, it gives it more movement, and then on top of that, just gave it more energy. Do I have the processing for it though? That's a million dollar question. Let's look it up. Oh, nice, I do. Good stuff. Save your freaking chains, guys. It helps so much. Let's throw in a downlifter. Oops. Whoa, 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 where am I going? Okay. Let's throw in a downlifter. Let's do a crash effect also. And then also what I'd like to do is add like some fills in. I love this fill that I made. This doesn't look right. I'm definitely missing some some beef in this drop, I could tell. Um, To be honest, I really just want to listen to this already. Is there anything else that I want to add before? I guess, wait, all right, let me let me work on this a tiny bit more. So what I'll do is I'll add like, okay, so we'll do only you drop claps. Put those here. I'm filling in the gaps here. So if we have to drop, oh, loop. And then, and then what do I want to do? Let me throw in this baddie here. And... Oh my God, I'm so curious to see what this sounds like. <laughs> I, I know I'm missing things, so like, 
I just want to hear it. I'm getting so impatient. Is that it? Is that all I can do? Is that all I want to do? I think I think I'm gonna turn on the speakers now, guys. I want to do it. Turn on the speakers. Okay. All right, speakers are on. All right, starting from the top. Yo, my heart's pounding. Okay. Dude, that's hilarious. Okay. Initial thoughts. My melodies are ass without hearing them. Holy crap. Okay, the melodies are terrible. But the sounds, though... It's not terrible. Dude, wait. Yo, give me like five minutes. I want to work on this. Five minutes later. Alrighty, guys. So I just worked on it for just a little bit. Um, Obviously, this idea is some hot ass. No, I'm kidding. But... I mean, this isn't something that I would finish or release by any stretch of the imagination. However, I wanted to show you guys what I did quickly. So uh, just to run through it real quick, I had to adjust the melody because it was god awful. Same thing with the chord progressions. And a lot of the times what happened is um, I, w I didn't know what octave to place the, the MIDI. So a lot of sounds like were too high or too low and it sounded really weird. But I made like some quick fixes. I didn't work on it for long at all. So I wanted to play it with the uh, fixed changes. So yeah, there you have it. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I think it was a super fun challenge. Shout out to avocado and banana. Was that your name? Avocado and pineapple? Something with fruit. Let me look quick. Um, avocado and pineapple. Shout out to you for this challenge idea. I thought it was really fun to do. Definitely entertaining. I hope you guys found some sort of entertainment. If you guys have any challenge requests or things you'd like to see from me, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. If you haven't checked out my song alone, be sure to do that. I'm so happy that it's finally out now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it funny, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell because I am uploading every week. But other than that, that'll be all for me today. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Oh,